Here's a 2023 um, Basin Youth for Christ presentation and banquet. We're glad that you're, you're with us here tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started, but let me uh, open our time in a word of prayer. And as we pray tonight, we're going to pray specifically for um, the Mojica family in Bonanza. They uh, encountered a terrible tragedy just uh, two nights ago. Um, Adrian Mojica, who was going to be a senior um, at Bonanza, died in a, a car crash over the weekend. And so we're going to specifically uh, lift up that family at this time, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Father, Lord, we just come to you right now, and Lord, we lift up, God, the Mojica family to you. Lord, the Bonanza community to you, the students, Lord, in his class, in the rest of the the school, Lord, those of us that, that knew him. Lord, we just ask, God, that you would enter into this time of mourning and, and loss, Lord, that you'd comfort the family in only a way that only you can. And Lord, we just uh, commit this time of worship to you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Again, thanks for being here. We're glad you're here, and uh, I'd like to invite you to join us in some worship. I'm not skilled to understand. I am not skilled to understand what God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word and deed. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need of Him to be my Savior, that He would leave His place on high and come for sinful men to die. You count it strange, so once did I Before I knew my Savior My Savior loves Cause my Savior loves My Savior lives My Savior's always there for me My God He was My God He is My God is always gonna be My Savior loves My Savior lives My Savior's always there for me My God He was My God He is My God is always gonna be My Savior loves, cause my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God He was, my God He is, my God is always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God He was, my God He is, my God is always gonna be. living, dying, let me bring my strength, my solace from this spring, that he who lives to be my king, once died to be my savior, that he would leave his place, that he would leave his place on high. 
and come for sinful men to die. You counted strange, so once did I. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior is always there for me. My God He was, my God He is, my God is always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior is always there for me. My God He was, my God He is, my God is always gonna be. I am not skilled to understand. What God has willed, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. Excellent. Thank you for singing along. filled with his praises one day when sin was as black as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelled among men my example is he the word became flesh and his light shined among us his glory For living he loved me, and dying he saved me, and buried he carried my sins far away, and rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they let him, one day they led him up Calvary's mountain, one day they nailed him to die on a tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. Hands that heal nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Yes, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, and rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door and then he arose over death he had conquered now he's ascended my lord evermore because death could not hold him and the grave could not keep him from rising again yes living he loved me and dying Save me and buried he carried my sins far away and rising he justified freely forever one day he's coming oh glorious day oh glorious day 
One day the trumpet. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the skies with his glories will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved one bringing. My Savior Jesus is mine. For living, he loved me. And dying, he saved me. And buried, he carried my sins far away. And rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. Thanks again for being here this evening. There's still a few folks coming in in the back, so if you got like a spare seat next to you and could slide over, that's groovy. Or oh, there's a few spaces up front. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God discloses And He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever you want to hear something fun? I just played that all in the wrong key. Wasn't that great? Now we're going to play it in the right key. This ought to be fun. Probably better for everybody who's trying to play along, too. <laughs> he speaks. Okay, he speaks. Here we go. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing And the melody that he gave to me Within my heart is ringing And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is called And he tells me I am his own 
and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever better in the right key. <laughs> the only person that was in the right key that was playing was Greg on the drums. ask you to stand on this bridge and chorus. Just sing it out to the Lord. Come on, my soul. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Shy on me, lift up your song, cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again, cause all that.
But if nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Alleluia Alleluia If you're uh, able to remain standing for this last one, that'd be great.
Jesus Messiah. can be seated. Thanks again for coming tonight. Would you tell the band to give them a round of applause for being here tonight and their help and effort? Well, we want to welcome you again to uh, this year's 2023 presentation. My name, if, uh, if I haven't met you yet, is Patrick Haggerty. I'm the executive director for Basin Youth for Christ, and it's been uh, my honor to serve in that role now uh, for quite some time here, um, serving the lost and the lonely and the hurting youth here in our basin. Youth for Christ itself was established in 1944. Uh, the Reverend Billy Graham was the first paid staff person for Youth for Christ. Our particular local chapter was started here in 1996. Um, this year completes our 27th year of uh, ministry here in the basin. Yeah, praise God for sure. Uh, YFC reaches young people everywhere, working with the local church and other like-minded partners to raise up lifelong followers of Jesus who lead by their godliness in lifestyle, their devotion to the word of God in prayer, passion for sharing the love of Christ, and commitment to social involvement. Our particular focus is that we desire to mobilize Christian adults to engage in authentic Christ-sharing relationships with youth here in the Klamath Basin, helping them develop the mental the physical, the social, and the spiritual components in their lives. Um, if you're here this evening and you have ever uh, volunteered with Youth for Christ either in the past or the present, that could be either as a board member, helping out with Campus Life, helping us with our Point Break workshops, coming and serving at one of our camps as a counselor, um, volunteer in any capacity, either board or volunteer. Would you please stand so we could acknowledge you? Anybody in the room here who's ever... Wow. Thank you. Thank you. This, uh, this does not work without you. Uh, in Basin Youth for Christ, we have a few uh, ministries that we employ as we're working with uh, youth here in our local area. The first one is Campus Life. Um, I help lead a team of trusted adults that invest directly in the lives of uh, high school students Monday nights just right next door at the Waystation Youth Center. This year, we've had students from Lost River, Tule Lake, Butte, uh, Butte Valley, Henley, and New Horizon um, Christian School attending. Also on Tuesday nights, we have our Campus Life Middle School program, uh, where we're working with 6th uh, through 8th grade students from Lost River and Tule Lake. Our Bonanza Campus Life program, you'll meet uh, Kelly Hess if you haven't already met him. He's our Bonanza Area Director. He leads another team of adults uh, engaged in authentic Christ-sharing relationships with students. This year has been a year of tremendous growth in the Bonanza area, both in size and in connection. Um, they've had as many as 50 youth attending Campus Life on a, on a Monday night at their club. Um, for Parent Life, uh, you'll meet her here in just a moment, but Becky Alvarez is our Parent Life Director. 
Um, her and her team of amazing volunteers are investing uh, currently in parenting or pregnant or um, teens in our basin who have had an abortion. This ministry is certainly unique in its focus um, here in our basin, and the thing that I enjoy about parent life is we're reaching two generations at a time all at once with children who are raising now their own children. Um, YFC Camp. Um, each year we take, make it a priority to get students out into God's creation and expose them uh, to the faithful teaching of God's word. We host two camps uh, each summer, uh, one for middle school, another for high school. Uh, we also host uh, an annual backpacking trip uh, in the wilderness along the Pacific Crest Trail. And then finally we have our point break workshops that we do. Um, these workshops teach biblical principles to public school students um, regarding how to treat each other with love and respect and empathy. Basin Youth for Christ has been blessed abundantly with three venues. Um, next door is our Way Station Youth Center. It's the main hub for the majority of our weekly meetings that we do here locally. Uh, we also used it to uh, host other school and community events. The theater you're sitting in tonight, the historic Broadway Theater, uh, we're blessed to be able to own and operate this as well. Um, we were able to reopen it in 2014 after 44 years being boarded up and uh, neglected and vacant. It's uh, now used for youth meetings and school and community events and concerts and pageants and church uh, meetings and movie nights and, 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 lots of things. Um, tomorrow night, we want to invite you to come back to this theater uh, We'd like for you to be here before 6 p.m. because we'll start at 6. Um, but we have uh, a special speaker who's going to be here. His name is Brad Huddleston. And he's going to be speaking about a current issue that is crucial for you to have a better understanding of and me. Um, and it's the issue of finding a healthy balance with the technology that we have. Um, I mean, we're all aware when you look around at our society how so many of us are constantly on our device of some sort, right? And we're not interacting with, with each other face to face. And it, it really is an addictive situation. And we would love to have you come back and listen to Brad tomorrow night. Um, feel free to bring uh, your family with you. We'll just pack as many people in here as we can. Um, the only caveat that I have is that you need to understand up front that because he's talking about digital addiction, obviously the subject of pornography will come up. So you can feel that out however you want to as a parent. Now, Next door, just right outside, um, we were able to install the Broadway Park um, using lots that had been vacant here in Malin since 1980. Now it's a vibrant green space where we can play volleyball and families and generations can hang out. Now, the theme for our banquet this year is new life. And uh, it's a fitting theme uh, for my wife and I. We were blessed, yeah. He's a good looking kid, right? Uh, blessed to welcome our son Tobias David into the world this, this February. Um, his birth has been a fresh reminder though of the priceless value of each and every child and it has personally renewed our commitment um, to reaching the next generation with the hope of Jesus. Um, when you look at this photo here, you're, you're looking at the face of Generation Alpha. Um, so, Anyway, there's, there's a big need on the way. Um, regarding new life, this year we want to focus on some of the amazing things that the Lord is accomplishing through Basin YFC. Now, there's certainly no way to cover everything, so we're not going to try to. So instead, we're just going to highlight for you a few of the incredible ways that Jesus is at work um, here in the ministry and we're going to do it uh, by highlighting our Chico mission uh, trip that we do. And all of our ministries are involved in it from, from each of the areas. We wish, personally, when we go on these trips, we wish that you could be there to see it in person because it's powerful. Uh, we hope that this is the next best thing. And uh, we just want to invite you to celebrate alongside of us when we just cover um, what God has done even just on, on one trip this year with Youth for Christ. At this time, I wanted to invite Becky Alvarez, our Parent Life Director, to the stage, and she'll continue. Thank you, Patrick. All right, my good vision is not as good as his. In the spring, we celebrate new life, but we do so with the knowledge that this life cycle follows a specific pattern. 
Jesus said it this way in John 12, 24, when he spoke of his coming crucifixion, truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. New life arises from death, burial, and resurrection. For students to encounter the abundant life that Jesus provides, death needs to come first. Death to self and our selfish nature, but to die to something we need to identify what needs to be released. Um, in Chico, we invited students to enter a time of deep and honest self-reflection. They were encouraged to expose the masks they tend to hide behind so that the Lord could address the truth inside of their hearts. Here's a sample of some of the masks that they revealed. I'm a good Christian kid. Everything is okay. The truth is I feel invisible and rejected. I'm happy, but I'm not. I use jokes and sarcasm to mask how I truly feel. I can trust you. You're lazy, lose weight, work harder. I need to stop hiding from myself and from God. I don't care what people think about me, but it's not true. Jesus, help. I'd like to share a little video clip with you of one of our teens. This is one of our teen moms involved in the Parent Life Program. And this is just a glimpse into her story and the brokenness where she comes from. Please take a moment and listen. Welcome. I'm Becky Alvarez, Parent Life Director with Basin Youth for Christ. Thank you for coming tonight and listening to our teen stories. Kirsten's story began before she was even born. When Kirsten's mom was pregnant and found out that she was having a girl, she decided to have an abortion because she didn't want a girl. However, without realizing it, the Lord saved Kirsten because her mother missed her appointment. Next, her mother found a doctor that would perform an illegal cesarean delivery at 23 weeks. Miraculously, Kirsten survived the early delivery and was taken home by her grandfather. Her grandfather was not able to keep her, so Kirsten's mom decided to try and raise her and the brothers. However, there were times when her mom chose men and drugs over her children. That led to Kirsten going in and out of foster care throughout her growing up. While her grandfather did not adopt Kirsten, she was able to be in her, he was able to be in her life, and she feels he did the best job of looking out for her and raising her. Sadly, Kirsten's grandfather passed away during the pandemic, and she was not able to say goodbye in person. Kirsten realizes that her weakness is not letting go of bad relationships. Wanting to be wanted makes it difficult to let go, even if they are unhealthy relationships. Kirsten met Taryn, the baby's father, shortly after her grandfather passed away, and they have been working at trying to build a family together and maybe have the family that she didn't. She and Taryn are also working at trying to graduate before the baby comes. She and Taryn have been actively coming and participating in parent life since their first visit. Here's the rest of Kirsten's story. Hello, my name is Kirsten. I'm 18 years old and I go to Falcon Lights Online. Um, I'm 33 weeks pregnant. I've been attending parent life for about six months now. Um, I think I joined when I was 13 weeks. I found out about Parent Life when I went to church and um, met a new family at my church. And she invited me to one of the dinners that week. That week, and so I ended up going, and I just kind of clicked and kept on coming. When I first found out I was pregnant, I was really happy. We were trying for a really long time, so when it finally happened after a miscarriage. Um, we, it was really, it was really nice to be able to finally have something. At first, I was quite scared that we would miscarry again, but we haven't, and so I'm still pretty excited that we get a baby to to raise and have a future with. Currently, one of the things we're working on is getting into a, a new house and getting the nursery set up and everything for the baby, how we would like it. I appreciate Becky from Parent Life because 
she always has activities to do and she makes sure everyone's on board and on track with what she's trying to teach and um, is always through and open to any questions or anything that people have to say. She's always nice um, and in a very cheerful mood and the ladies she has helping with her are also wonderful ladies. Parent Life has prepared me in many different ra ways to raise the baby, taught many things about how to discipline and how to like nurture and keep your baby safe. At the same time of like not letting other things like stress or anger affect how you're raising your baby. Um, I feel like I have a good relationship with uh, Jesus. I do think I need to work on more things like I feel like I could pray more and open my Bible more. But I do feel like parent life has also helped with that because it's always referred or like looking back onto Bible verses and and Jesus is himself. Jesus, he loves me. Sorry. <laughs> that just always touches my heart. Okay, with our struggles revealed, ultimately the Lord wants to surrender those strongholds to him. He invites us to come and to die to our old nature so we might discover a new life that he alone provides. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on a tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Students in Chico took the time to take their temptations and leave them on the cross. Here's what they left behind so that they could be free to live for Christ. I give you my life, my heaviness, depression, pornography, doubting you, myself, and others. I give you my heart, my time. Surrender my heart and soul to you. Lying, swearing, cutting, bulimia, my addictions, self-hate, I'm done running, I want to be set free. Forgive me, show me my purpose, thank you for saving me. First of all, with uh, Kirsten's story, right, is, is anybody's story here like a nice straight line and it's nice and clean? There's never been any didos, right? I mean, when we, when we enter into ministry in the lives of people, we enter into their mess. Uh, new life never breaks through the surface without its fair share of struggle. Students in this generation are navigating a world that's more broken and confusing than any American generation to date. Those challenges carry legitimate cause for lamentations, the honest assessment of souls. Uh, the following are some laments that students left behind for their peers to read. God save me. I don't know how to love you, but I want to. God, you've always listened and counted my countless tears. I feel lost. I put my identity in my friends and boyfriends, what I look like, many other things. Now I've lost everyone and I struggle with my image and who I am. I don't know where I'm going or what your plan is for me. I feel lost and empty most days. It seems to be getting worse. You never said that this life was easy and I'll choose to trust that you will open a door and put opportunities in front of me. Please heal my pain. God, you've been so faithful to me, but lately I've been feeling so alone. I just feel different. I can't explain it, but I've never felt accepted or wanted. But you've always stayed with me, even when I didn't know if you were real. Thank you. 
I started out in a non-Christian home. All I can remember is my parents fighting and drinking, my mom beating my dad. I attempted suicide. I didn't succeed. I got mean. I shut people out. But on the backpacking trip, I gave my heart to Jesus, but it wasn't real. I'm really struggling. I don't know what to do. I love you, Lord. I'm struggling, though. I've been bullied and told I'm worthless, and I have no talent. I hold it all inside, and it's hard. God, I know you know the pain that I have experienced and the pain I feel every moment. I'm not here to ask for healing. I want to know how to use my pain for good. Use my pain in a way that would heal me more than any removal of my pain ever could. That's rather profound. At this time, I wanted to uh, invite Kelly Hess. He's our Bonanza Area Director up, and he's going to be sharing with you some of the students' stories that they wrote down. Good evening, family. I like to say that because it's, this world's kind of been a crazy place, and what we have with Jesus and in common, it is more like a family than anything else in this world. Amen? It is. Yeah. So we're going to talk about my story, not mine, but student stories. With new life underway and growing towards maturity, our stories continue to develop. I'm going to read what students expressed in brief summaries of their current journeys with Jesus. This is a photo of the notes on their own handwriting from Chico. The first time I went to YFC was eighth grade with a bunch of friends from my baseball team, and I have gone ever since then. Now looking back, I see a big change in my life from my friends to the way I act with family, and I know it's because of God. Long ago, I was a very rude, bitter person. I was a bully and would start fights intentionally to rid my anger. Since that time, I put my trust in Christ, and he has helped me love others. I lost everyone I had before. I grew apart from my family. I focused on boys or food or anything that could fulfill me. I found God and he blessed me with the Christian friends and is helping heal my heart. I shut God out and myself to the point where I really wasn't me. I have even wanted to die, but I'm so glad I didn't because I would have never made it here today. And to all who read this, God might seem scary, but try your best to trust him. I grew up in a Christian family. I gave my life to the Lord, but I never felt a change. I kept giving my life to him, but nothing happened. I came to the Chico trip broken and sad, but I leave restored and healed. Now I know for sure that I am a Christian. My first year of high school, my mom ran away. She didn't want us anymore and picked the world over God and her family. Through it all, God gave me hope and kept me from anxiety and depression. He showed me that even if she didn't want me, he still cared. He brought her back to us. What was once broken is now restored, and my faith only grew through it all. I want to introduce you to a young girl that's been coming since September. And, and as she tells her story, um, this past year, from 22 to 23, has been the most difficult for me, not only in ministry, but in life, with, everything, with a lot of stuff that has transpired. And in the darkest times, God has brought the most growth and life in the ministry in Bonanza. And this is a short story um, communicating what has transpired. Hi, my name is Ariana, and I'm a sophomore at Bonanza High School. When I was 16 years old, I got kicked out of my mom's apartment. Me and her were not getting along, so I had nowhere to go. When I initially got kicked out, I was quite angry. Um, so therefore, I was in Klamath at the time, and I had to walk to my father's and say that I wasn't gonna stay at his house nor mom's house because of previous 
issues. I met Chris Hankins when her dog had appeared at the school and I recognized it from a yard. So I took it back to her house and offered to walk it once a week. So I took the school bus the next morning to get to Bonanza and ended up at her doorstep by lunchtime. And she welcomed me in her home with open arms. I asked her if I could work and trade for board and food. Chris said, give me a couple days to think about it. And then she looked at the counter and looked back at me and she said, actually, your room's right there. Chris said that she had, had prayed for a helping hand because she was getting too old to do everything herself. And so I was an answer to prayer. So I got invited to Campus Life, the De Young's house, by Navea Preston. And I said, you know what? It sounds like a group of a bunch of rebel teenagers. Let's do it. When I stepped out of the car, I was definitely hesitant at first. Um, didn't recognize most of the faces. Most of the kids were homeschooled. And then Nevaeh was just like, come on, you got this, you know? So I went up to some of the students and they I remember they were singing Heart Like a Truck, I believe. And it was just, the energy was great. So coming to youth group on a regular basis, I was like, Grandma, no way, no. And then I figured out that the walking time in between was a break for me. And by the time I got there, the energy was amazing. Like everyone was so happy to see me and I enjoyed showing up. So singing, it really impacts me. Uh, music has been a big part of my life. It's been something that I use to get over whatever I'm dealing with. And when I first heard some of the Christian, Christian songs, I was like, mm, maybe not. And then I was like, you know what? This is actually kind of groovy, you know? I can get used to this. And I just fell in love right there with the whole group. So at the Running Y, we first got there and I was like, I thought you said this was a motel. This is like paradise. But some of the groups got mixed up this time and I fell in love so hard with all of my group. Um, our in-between downtimes where we were just gonna pick up the Bible in like small groups of threes, I really enjoyed because it helped me better understand what the gospel was and what Jesus was trying to tell me. Um, and I believe her name is Julie D. Young really helped me better understand of how to look at my scriptures and get into a dive of my Bible. So we had this like, I don't know what you would call it. It wasn't quite a yurt. It was like this big building where we had our full group meet up and we were going to pray anywhere from praying to reading our Bibles to listening to Kelly or Pat speak, to listening to music. And one day we had this like mixed emotion type of feeling and then everyone started crying after one of the presentations was done. And I went into a corner and I was like, Kelly, can I please figure out, like, I don't know how to do it, but can I figure out how to give my life to God? And he was like, of course. And he helped me right there. Later on, when I started coming, and I started coming for multiple months, I figured out that God was showing me what family was supposed to be like, and that I finally had a family to call my own within the youth group, and it was just great. So there's a video that's two and a half minutes longer that communicates more of a story. And after tonight, it's going to be uploaded to our Youth for Christ website. And I would encourage you to watch it because she communicates many more things about what God has done in her life. And uh, she's brought about 10 to 15 students from school who are her friends to join us.
And so, and uh, most of you have met her. She was at the door, very excited and vibrant to shake hands and meet all of you and told her about her cheesecake that she made. She made a lemon bars too, but don't worry, Ariana, we won't tell them about those. They didn't quite work out, but it's okay. Um, yeah, you need to go watch the video of the two and a half minutes longer. It's, it's a beautiful story. So an attitude of gratitude. Waiting patiently for visible growth to appear from beneath the soil can be difficult. But the gratitude we feel when those first tender shoots rise from the soil and open up toward the sun above is truly wonderful. I want to invite you to eavesdrop on some of the thankfulness students express to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the breath in my lungs, for your provision, for your grace, for not being alone, for giving me a loving family, for the beautiful creation, for unanswered prayers, for people who love me, for answering my prayers, for your mercy and compassion and love, for campus life, that you are God and I am not, my talents and abilities, for a family who loves me, for giving me life today, for not giving up on me, for the Bible, for our adult leaders, for the ways you're working in my life, for my family in this group, now I have people I could rely on. And thank you for the scars that you've kept for me. I'm going to invite Patrick to come back up. While the Lord creates new life day by day in the lives of students, we'd like for you to witness how the fruit of praise uh, begins to develop. David wrote in the book of Psalms in Psalm 51, 15, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Again, David wrote in Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Here's just a few brief psalms of praise that students wrote from their heart to the Lord. You've always been there. You've always helped me. You've always believed in me. Always stay in my heart. I love you, Jesus. You watch over me, showing me light that overcomes endless shadows. You are so faithful to your promises. You are good. Your plans are good. Your ways are good. They're difficult, but they're good. They are impossible, but with your help, it's possible. You draw near to me as I draw near to you. Your fragrance is sweet to my nostrils. Your presence brings a feeling of awe and wonder. I am afraid, but you comfort me. You are good. It's weird to say, but you're like a mole, popping your head out of every hole. You've fixed a broken home, that I know, everything to you I owe. As to the things I know you see, a broken heart, a broken me. Now I beg you to mend this heart, take these pieces, fix every part. I know you can, I heard you do it, so help me, Lord, even though I blew it. Right, it's just really cool, right? <clears throat> New life in Jesus ultimately produces fruit for other people to enjoy. Paul said it this way in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse six. We have different gifts, each according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Uh, while we were there, students wrote out encouragement cards for other students to read for themselves and receive encouragement. Now here's a sample of what they wrote anonymously to each other. You are loved by God, no matter what. I may not know who is reading this, but I can say you mean a lot, and God has amazing plans for you. I'm glad you're part of this family. Jesus loves you, and he's always there for you. 
When you're hurting, he wants you to turn to him. He is joyful when you repent for your sins. He will always forgive you. He died for your sins to set you free. God will break the chains that have been holding you down. Ask, you'll receive. Give him the burden that is weighing down on you and he'll carry it for you. Just surrender. There is no fight. God can't help you win. Don't give up hope. He can meet you anywhere. Just remember, if you tell someone about your struggle, it helps. Even if it's scary, trust God. You are the only person who can do what you can do for others. Ending everything seems like the only option sometimes, but God put you here for a purpose. Check it out. God loves you, and he wants a relationship with you. Trying to replace God does not work. God is the only one who can truly provide joy and life and love in life. Cling to him. Now, ultimately, the new life that God produces in us should eventually seek to replicate itself. God painted this picture for us in his creation. In Genesis 1, uh, 11 through 12, it says this, Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, of, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. So over time, we should see Jesus create in students who believe a desire to share his life-changing message with other people. Uh, here's one sample from some post-it notes that students left stuck all over a map of the world uh, while we were in Chico, while they were either praying for the world or thinking about where God might be calling them in the future. The first one is, let me serve you to be a missionary anywhere. I pray Mexico will see your truth. Lord, if you want me to go serve, please open the door. I want the division here in the USA to end, amen? That would be nice, good prayer. I pray that Russia would believe in you. Here I am, God, send me. Isaiah Delaney is a student who has been involved with campus life uh, since the seventh grade. Um, we're gonna expose you here to a portion of his story and his hopes for continuing to serve Jesus uh, as he graduates and heads off uh, to attend a private Christian university. Here's Isaiah's story. He used to get bullied in school and I didn't feel like I fit in very well in there. It made me shy and quiet. So quiet that people had to come up closer just to hear me say something. During COVID hit, I've hid myself for almost two and a half years. Like I kept my hoodie on and a mask on so I won't be noticed. I started coming to campus life because my friend Jake invited me to come. During my eighth grade year, I took a risk of signing up to junior high summer camp and I gave my life to Jesus. After I invited him in my life, he has helped me develop courage throughout my life. Like that one time I went to Six Flags for a high school summer camp and ride a roller coaster, which was scary. And went to San Francisco to help homeless people and took the biggest step by going on an airplane and go to Indianapolis for National FFA Convention. I come to Campus Life because I want to know more about God and understand God's Word and be able to spread it to my family. One of the things I'm very hopeful for for my family is to know about Jesus. My dad is not a believer and my sisters aren't there yet and my mom, I'm very hopeful that she's kind of there. She just needs a little bit more words and I can do what I can to help her get there. One thing I enjoyed about coming to Campus Life is learning some skills I've never thought I could do, like 
not just video games, but being a good hockey goalie and an MVP for volleyball. Difference between me, seventh grade, and my current year now is that I have more courage to talk, walk, probably socialize, and be able to communicate with other people and be open. God has used Patrick Haggerty, Kyler Ogman, and Kelly Hess, and everyone I've known that I've connected to to make me become the man that I am right now. I'm excited to share that I got accepted to go to Corbin University in the fall and be first in my family to go to college. I'm excited for Christian education and see what God will plan things for me in the future. Thank you for your support for Youth for Christ so other people like me can grow more connected to God. I would encourage you um, to pray for Isaiah's family. It really is a burden on his heart that his family would come to know Jesus. So I invite you to do that. Uh, finally, this process of death, burial, and resurrection uh, continues in life after life, right? Again and again and again as God graciously calls his children to himself and they surrender by faith. But in James chapter 5, verse 7 through 8, it alludes to the idea that sowing seed and watching and waiting for growth requires patience. Carlos came to campus life consistently from the sixth grade until his sophomore year. But in 2020, uh, he ran away from the Lord and he tried to find fulfillment in other places. Just a few Sundays ago, as a senior about to graduate from Mazama, sitting in this auditorium, after the community um, Easter church service concluded, Carlos approached me um, and expressed his desire to be saved. So sitting right there, um, he surrendered his life to Jesus. This is a photo of uh, Carlos holding that with me and Tobias from just this week. I wanna invite you um, to pray for Carlos and allow his face to also represent all the other kids that are involved all over our basin. We need to pray for the Lord to watch over them, to protect them as they seek to trust him fully and try to live for him in a world that's gone crazy. Uh, we need to pray for God to raise up a faithful generation who will continue to proclaim the goodness of God long after we've gone home to be with Jesus. In the meantime, we want you to know and understand that we are in complete agreement with the Apostle Paul when he wrote to a young man in his care named Timothy when he said, I charge you, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. For time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. They'll turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Our board of directors, our staff, and our volunteers make this pledge to you. We promise to remain committed to preaching the word of God faithfully with patience and compassion no matter what crazy turns culture wants to take. Your love and your help and your support is reaching the next generation one life at a time. Thank you very, very much for all that you do. Now, our hope is, some of you may be asking, how can I get involved? 
or others may be feeling led to get more involved. It's my promise that as you do and are involved, it will help produce new life in your life too, spiritual growth for you. First of all, we'd love to have you be on our prayer team. Um, these faithful prayer partners take time to pray over specific requests from students and needs within Basin YFC. It's a super easy thing to do and to join, and it's a practical way to get involved. Um, you can certainly contact us via email or from our website at basinyfc.org, or you can use one of the response envelopes next door at the banquet at your table. Just let us know if you're interested, and we can get you added to this team right away. For an example, just yesterday when we found out about Adrian passing away, I was able to just jump on my computer and ask 158 people to pray. And they did. Many of you here in the room are on that team. Also, we want to encourage you to volunteer your time. Um, as a part of our five-year strategic plan, uh, we're seeking to mobilize another 40 adult volunteers who are directly involved in the lives of youth, either through campus life or parent life, helping on a summer retreat, serving as a board member, or volunteering directly uh, with the local school. Just encourage you, pray. Ask God and say, Lord, is this something that you want me to get involved in? And if you feel like the Lord says yes, then say yes. Okay, it's that simple. We specifically need uh, volunteers with our parent life program and with our middle school campus life program as well. Um, finally, this ministry is funded as God moves through men and women just like you to support the ministry on either a monthly or an annual basis. Um, there are five easy ways to help support what the Lord is doing through YFC and we just wanna encourage you to prayerfully consider how you could be involved or maybe if you wanna be more involved. Um, First of all, direct mail. By the way, I know generationally this is almost out of style, but I love direct mail. It's amazing. I love going to the post office. I like, it's good. I like holding things in my hand. Um, online banking. It's a simple way to set up giving. It saves stamps. Uh, you can have the bank pay for your stamps, and you can set donations up either monthly, quarterly, or annually. You can certainly visit our website, please. We'd love to have you do it. We just got done redesigning it this year. It's way more user-friendly. User scrolls really good on whatever device you're using. That's basinyfc.org. Also, PayPal, um, at every page there on our website, has a link for how to donate using PayPal. Um, you can use your debit or your credit card and set up for auto payments if you want to. And then finally, uh, Fred Meyer. If you like shopping at Fred Meyer, you can just link your community service or your community rewards card with Basin Youth for Christ, and they'll just send us a portion of their profit uh, every quarter. It's just a simple thing to do. Again, we want to say thank you for taking the time uh, to be here with us this evening. Um, also, many, many, many of you in the room are already involved heavily. This ministry does not exist without you. So thank you for taking the time to see this vision and serve Jesus in this capacity. We love serving Jesus alongside of you. Now, I'm just about to dismiss us to go next door and have an extravagant meal together. Um, before I dismiss us, I want to you first of all to notice on your name tag that there is a number. The number on your name tag is important. When you go next door, you're sitting at the table that has your number on it. It's that simple, okay? So find your number and find a spot to sit at that table. Also, this year, we, uh, it worked great last year and we're gonna continue to do it. Um, this year, there are 12 desserts when you walk in on the right-hand side. And uh, those 12 desserts, it'll, there'll be a silent auction table for those 12 desserts, okay? Uh, the bidding starts at $100 and it's capped at 250, okay? So when you're bidding for a dessert, you can uh, write your name in there. We wanna encourage you when you sit down, it's not for you individually. What you do is you pool all your resources together as a table, you have a conversation. You say, hey, how much can you guys do for dessert? Whatever, you pool all the funds together and then you figure out what you wanna do, okay? So um, silent auction for 12 desserts and then after that we'll have our live auction where there's no limit um, on those desserts that will be auctioned off um, at that point in time. Um, the cost for tonight's meal has already been uh, provided by people that were generous enough to sponsor the meal. So all the profits from tonight just go directly uh, to Youth for Christ. Um, again, 
When you arrive next door, take the time to look at the desserts and figure out uh, as a table, oh, do we want to go for something on the no limit table? Do we want to do something on the silent auction table? Whatever. Have those sorts of conversations. And then, uh, yeah, when I dismiss you, I would love it if you would save most of your chat time for over there because we're going to have plenty of time to chat over there. So just... You'll just take off, head over there, then you, then you chat it up with all your homies, and it'll be good, okay? All right, let me, let me pray and tell Jesus thanks. Jesus, thank you for tonight, for this chance to be together like this. We give you glory and praise and honor and adoration, Jesus Christ. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords, and you, Lord, have given this commission, Lord, to us as your people. Lord, to be faithful, to share your truth with the next generation. And God, I pray that whatever capacity we serve in as we follow you, God, whether we're a parent of a, a young child, a grandparent, doesn't matter. Lord, may we be faithful to teach and share your love with the next generation. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.